We're always looking to start new games, but what is the right way to begin one? Well, the reality is there really isn't a right way, just lots of ways. The common trope of meeting in a tavern is always a reasonable and tangible way of introducing a group of adventurers to each other, as well as the plot. But let's discuss the start of campaigns and various ways that you can do it. Hi, I'm Loki, and welcome back to the lair. And boy, it's good to be back. The way you start a campaign is vital to drawing in your players and setting expectations. Whether you're playing with the same group of people that you've been playing for many years, or taking on a new group of adventurers eager to get their swords wet. It doesn't really matter. Do you want the story to have a slower pace, where the plot is slowly leaked out over time? Or do you want to drop them into the middle of chaos? A tavern is always good, but it does tend to be quite slow. Players aren't usually directed towards any content in particular, and are told to be proactive and start engaging. I find that a lot of players, especially newer players, much prefer to be reactive. To react to the things that are happening around them, and then make decisions based on those reactions. So what other options do we have? Well. The next is obviously a prison escape. Everybody's done one, I imagine. Most of you have probably done one. And perhaps the party were captured, travelling through the local region, and they now must work together in order to escape. I find this works very well for campaigns with high risk, high reward. But it's also an idea that works best with proactive players, because they'll need to think on their feet in order to escape their bindings, fall or defeat the guards, and escape whatever prison or encampment that they are a part of. And there is obviously a lot of risk of players dying with this idea, so it's important to have your players make simple, straightforward characters with little to no buy-in. Maybe they make multiple characters, which is really cool for like um, a low level, like level zero game for example, you know? If your uh, players are making characters with, you know, four pages of backstory just to get stabbed to death by goblin spears, it's unlikely that they'll be very pleased. I've run a few uh, prison escapes in the past, and I've also been a player in some as well. It's not easy to do right. The reality is, you've got to dangle the possibility of freedom directly in their faces and provide hints whenever appropriate. Telling your players to make straightforward characters with limited detail is the best way of setting the appropriate expectations that you are looking for and outline the threat that this game is going to have. Expectations really do mean everything, and perhaps I'll make a future video on that topic specifically, but right now, let's focus on the secret to starting a good game. <laughs> The next idea is a hot start, and I forget who actually coined the term, but I, it's very popular in uh, Matt Colville's community, so maybe you've heard from, if you watch him or seen any of his videos, maybe you've heard the, ex the expression. But a hot start is where you drop your players straight into the action, in straight into a combat, straight into a very chaotic, dramatic, circumstantial situation. Whether they're being attacked on the road as a group of caravan guards or taking part in a battle as levies or conscripts. Because obviously that's going to make sense if they're like level one, right? That they'd probably be like low ranking foot troops or something similar. I find that defending a siege is a really interesting way to start a campaign because the players don't have to really do much but fight. They don't really have much choice. And I think giving your players too much choice to begin with is not necessarily a good idea. <laughs> Obviously it's up to you to determine how you want the siege to go. But I think in my opinion I like the idea that the city or castle would be overrun. And the players would be forced to flee. It reminds me of the start of the Witcher Netflix series. With uh, Henry Cavill right playing, uh, playing Geralt. Um... Where like Princess Cirilla is escaping the might of Nilfgaard from Sintra 
right? That's really, really cool. Maybe the party is protecting the princess. That could be their first major quest. That really does speak of like epic fantasy. And whether you're somebody who's kind of old school or perhaps a more modern gamer, everybody does. Lo everybody loves an epic story, right? A, a cool, exciting, something that's gripping, something that's going to be very memorable. Great way of starting a campaign, especially in a narratively driven game, I would say. I think that a lot of campaign starts can be a little bit dull and, and exciting usually. Grabbing your players and shaking them violently to their core with exciting dramatic combats and storytelling is an immediate way to make a good impression and get them ready for the shared story that you guys are going to be able to tell together for the foreseeable future. The way you start your campaign also has to be based on the types of players that you have. If I know that my players have played together before, I'm much more likely to have a slower, more roleplay focused beginning where the players can introduce themselves, roleplay with local NPCs and quest givers and stuff. But if I know that the players are new to the hobby or new to my games, it's likely I'll be dropping them straight into the action and immediately get them rolling dice. The introductions and the roleplay can naturally flow later on once the players become more comfortable at the table and are ready to actually do that stuff. I think it's also really important to consider your players whenever you're running a game. Does that mean that you do everything they want or say? No, but to be a good dungeon master you need to understand that you are the key to everyone's fun. If you're setting a very slow pace to your game and making things too hard or unfair, it's likely that your players will probably realize this and not want to play. So, yeah. One thing I would really avoid doing is a lore dump. And I've seen a lot of DMs who do this. I joined a game relatively recently um, where the DM lore dumped us for about 5 or 10 minutes. And whilst, yes, there are some players who do appreciate and enjoy listening to the DM monologue for uh a while <laughs> talking about lore and other things most players would probably prefer to learn the lore over time and know what matters now on a kind of need to know basis right if i wanted to know about the lore of a game i'd ask for it or read it up myself if i was like given you know a document or a book or something like that if that makes sense I don't want to spend like 10 minutes or more listening to someone talk about stuff that my character is unlikely to be interested in. If it turns out that my, I don't know, elven fighter would like to know about the last great war in the land, there's the opportunity for the DM to adjust their collar, do some vocal exercises, and let me have it. You know, tell me, tell me everything that's going on with this war. I'm not saying that you can't start off with lore. But I'd say keep it within like a half a page, especially for your players who are like neurodivergent, right? Like myself. Uh, some of us have wandering minds and lose focus quite quickly, especially when we assume that we're coming to play to roll dice, kill monsters and get loot, right? When we're not here to hear expositions of law. <laughs> Does that make sense? I'd love to know what you guys have done more recently in order to begin your campaigns and whether you've considered anything that I've spoken about in this video today. The comment section is honestly your best friend and I'm very active in it, so let me have it. Make sure you guys have joined the Discord if you'd like to support me and the channel and you're very welcome to become a patron on my Patreon. Uh, which gives you access to charts, tables, and various homebrew systems that I've designed myself. It's definitely worth a couple of a couple of quid, a couple of dollars, and you'd be doing me a huge favour. Apart from that, the video is over. I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. I'll see you guys next time on Loki's Lair. Until then. <laughs>